Okay, so now I'm going to show how you bleed the brakes, uh, the front brakes, on a semi-automatic Citroen DS. So we've got bleed nipple here on the side of the carburetor, this valve, and we've got two bleed nipples over there on the top of the centrifugal regulator. So we're going to do this side first. So 8mm ring spanner onto the nipple, and then fit your bleed pipe. And the other end can go straight into the reservoir. In this case, it's LHS because it's a 1966 car. And if you tuck the pipe in such that it doesn't come out and crack the nipple off, only about a quarter turn, that's all you need. And now we need to start the car. And once the car is running, all we need to do is put your foot on the brake. And because it's a clear pipe, you can see the fluid. And there we can see. Now this one, you can see that there's quite a lot of air in the fluid. I'm going to cheat reaching through. Push the brake a little harder. Still, there's quite a lot of air coming out of this system. You want to keep flowing brake through the fluid through until there are no, many more, no more bubbles that you can see in the pipe. As it's circulating, you can just keep on going until it's clear like it is now. Then all you do is tighten up the bleed nipple, cloth would mop out any spillage, catch the pipe and lift it up and drain it into the tank. So that's this side done. We now need to move across to the other side. So the two bleed nipples here are on top of the centrifugal regulator. First of all, we'll take the covers off. But the two bleed nipples have different functions. So the one towards the front of the car, this one here, which has got an 8mm uh, hex on it, that is the one for the main circuit. And so with the engine running, if I just crack this off, fluid will automatically be forced out of the pipe and down to the reservoir. Okay, you can hear the uh, pump cutting in as required. The other one at the back is nine millimeters, different size. So I'll just move the pipe across with a little bit of spillage. So I'll put a cloth in under there because this is LHS and we don't want any LHS on the paintwork if we can possibly help it. Remove my 8mm spanner. Crack off the nipple for the rear. Now that's the brake. That's connected to the brake system. So nothing will come out until I put my foot on the brake, which I shall now do. So, with the brakes, you can see that there's a lot of air coming out with that brake on that side. Also you'll notice that the engine is slowed down that's because the valve on the carburetor is attached to the brake system and this gives you a slow tick over. So let the brake off again and push it on again until the fluid coming through the pipe is clear. So we bled the brakes, all I need to do now is tighten up the bleed nipple and remove the pipe, trying to spill as least amount as possible, drain it back into the tank. You can wipe out any spillage immediately, and you can always wash it down with water with LHS. With LHM, of course, you can use brake cleaner or any other, any other solvent. And finally, on this car, we'll put the covers back on the bleed nipples. So it's the brakes and the hydraulic system bled. So this being a manual car, I'm now going to show you how we bleed the brakes. Uh, it's different from a semi-automatic in that the bleed nipples are actually down on the calipers, whereas on a semi-automatic they're up elsewhere. So there are differences. That's why with a man manual car such as this, you, it's ideal if you take the shroud off 
so that you can see what you're actually doing and actually enables you to do the job. So what I'm doing here is using my bleed pipe, which I'm putting straight one end into the reservoir and the other end onto the bleed nipple once I've already fitted the spanner, which is a nine millimeter in this instance. We can then crack off the nipple without hurting yourself too much. And now it's a question of starting the car up and putting your foot on the brake. And I can now see green fluid flowing through the clear pipe and there's no air in the system. I can do it a couple of times and when I'm happy that that is right, I can stop the car. Go around, tighten up the bleed nipple and take off the pipe and ideally you want to pinch the end of the pipe to stop it leaking everywhere and lift it up high so it drains through the pipe itself. Otherwise you tend to get LHM all over yourself or the car. Not so pleasant. And then move on to the other side. Same again, same procedure. Put the spanner on first. And then attach the pipe. Slightly more tricky with this one because you've got cables in the way. Slacken off the bleed nipple. Quarter of a turn is all you need. And then repeat the process. Once again, my foot is on the brake and I can see the fluid flowing through the pipe and there are no bubbles, which means we have a nice clear system. Once again, tighten up the bleed nipple, remove the pipe and drain the pipe into the reservoir. And that is the procedure for bleeding the front brakes on a manual car. All we've got to do now is put the shroud back on. Right, I'm now going to show you how to bleed the rear brakes uh, and what we have here. First of all, we put the car on high because you have to have the wheels on the ground. You have to have pressure in the suspension system because the pressure in the rear brakes is the same pressure as the pressure in the rear suspension. They're linked. And so if you jack the car off the ground so that the wheels are not on the ground, you will have no pressure in the suspension. Therefore, you will not have no pressure in the brakes. Therefore, you won't be able to bleed them. So what I do is I got a little pot which I'm going to hold down with a spanner. And most of this I have to do it blind. So first of all, we find that there is a, a cap on the bleed nipple, we put down safely. Then the spanner, which is eight mil, the size of the nipple. And I'm putting it there in a position so that I can then undo the, the bleed nipple. We then have a pipe, which we previously worked out will actually fit over the bleed nipple without leaking and without falling off. Fit that. Then undo the, undo the bleed nipple. I think that's undone, because I'm doing this by feel. I can't see the camera. And put the pipe, using my nice little Heath Robinson mechanism through a spanner, into the pot. I then have to start the car up and put my foot on the brake. So just have to press the brake pedal whilst observing and you can see, oh, there's a lot of air in that one. I take my foot off the brake pedal, suspension jacks back up again and I push the brakes again to bleed them further. I can see air coming out of the brake line. So I'll do this a third time once it's pumped up. And I'm happy that that is now coming out clear. And now I have to 
shut off the bleed nipple, tighten the bleed nipple up again. I can then take off the pipe and hold it high so that it doesn't pour everywhere. Take off the spanner and put back the little cap on the top of the bleed nipple. We'll then move on to the other side.